carry on the way they are, it really could happen. But our current events around the world, from the US to Syria and even here in the UK, are a sign of dangerous times. Or can we afford to be more optimistic? Joining me now is Abigail Austin, a former officer in the British Army. Abby has just returned from the States where she made a film broadcast tonight on Channel 4 looking at the role of the transgender movement in this election season. I'm also joined by the Russian analyst Alexander Nekrasov and from Washington DC by Rahim Kassam from Breitbart News. He was running for the UKIP leadership but withdrew earlier this week. Abby Austin first. Parts of Syria are lying in ruins. You've got President Trump, perhaps. You've got Russia resurgent. What do you make of it all? I think we're at a bigger crossroads now than at any time since the end of the Vietnam War in the 1970s. What we've got now at the end of 2016 is a United States that's still recovering from the recession of 2008, two damaged political candidates fighting for presidential election, and a United States that's reeling from being punched in the face over losing every war it's entered into for the last 15 years. What's different now in this agenda is that we're looking at a situation where the world is no longer governed by two superpower blocks that has a shared philosophy of mutually assured nuclear destruction, and an information age which has unleashed the dogs of war where sections of society that previously would not have had a voice are extending hateful, xenophobic and nationalistic language around the world. And that frankly has scared and upset this generation. Well, Alexander Nekrasov, the dogs of war have been unleashed, says Abby Austin there. Um, that suits Russia very well, doesn't it? Because Russia wants the West to be fearful, doesn't it? Well, it doesn't fit to Russia at all, because nobody wants a third uh, world war, and especially a nuclear war. So um, Russia is, is, has similar interests like any other country. It wants stability around its borders. It wants stability in the Middle East, because it influences Russia as well. So if it wants stability, why is Russia egging on a Trump presidency? That would provide the very opposite of stability. To be honest with you, if Russia really wanted to hurt America, if Russia really wanted to hurt America, it would be supporting Hillary Clinton. Because Hillary Clinton is a very divisive candidate. I think that if she wins, there is a, there is a big chance that America will start to disintegrate. Well, let me get Abby Austin to respond to that. Well, if I can quote an American general friend of mine, he told me last month that Vladimir Putin is the man who wakes up in the morning deciding what mischief he can do around the world. He has a very narrow nationalistic agenda which is primarily focused on main the maintenance of power and keeping himself in power. He knows that every Russian leader in recent history has fallen through weakness and this is about the maintenance of his position within Russia. The tragedy is that it is affecting international politics and the discourse around the world that's leading to great uncertainty. Quick response from you. Well, I totally well. disagree with that because the problem is that the current situation we have has been caused by the meddling of the West in the Ukraine. And I, and I, I actually try to, to, to tell it, to, to explain it to people, that Russia is mostly upset with what is happening in Ukraine. Because on its borders we have a civil war and nobody pays any attention. Everything is about Aleppo. People are dying in Ukraine, in eastern Ukraine. Its government is killing its own people. And, and the nobody instability cares. in the West would allow Russia once again to make a move on Ukraine. No, it's not Russia moving on Ukraine. Russia did not create that situation. If there wouldn't have been an armed coup in Kiev, there would have not have been a referendum in, the, in, the, in the Crimea, there would not have been a civil war okay. in the East. Let, let me turn to Rahim Kassamna. And people said that Brexit wouldn't happen. People are saying that Donald Trump cannot win. Have the establishment got it wrong again, in your view? Well, I think if you look at the... Uh, the polling that we're now seeing, it is they are slightly beginning to realize that this is much closer than they could have ever imagined. Um, and that happened during Brexit and it's happening now. But also we're looking at, especially today, the early voting statistics that are coming out from all across the United States. And it just looks like that Hillary Clinton isn't able to cobble together the same coalition as Barack Obama did. I think when you talk about the Russian angle specifically, I think there is a case to be made that Russia would easily lose a war with the United States and with NATO and the West. And so its only uh, objective, I think, in this is for an era of stability. Now, if you can look at the context of how Russia is involving itself or not involving itself in the United States, 
election, you have to go back to Hillary Clinton and her foundation. This is the same foundation that took tens of millions of pounds from Ukrainian and Russian oligarchs, and uranium, uranium creation in the United States is now massively owned by the Russians because of Secretary Clinton. But Remember, how, okay, Secretary but Clinton how, and the Democrats. How can people support a man who lies routinely and repeatedly? I mean, one fact checker recently out in Washington said that uh, President Trump uh, lied 37 times a day. Well, I know saw that statistic and it's a it's an incredibly spurious one um, it goes down to such minutia as you know picking up words that he, where he says things like which instead of that um, there is I think fault on both sides of this divide I'm not sure that anybody believed that this was the ideal fight that they wanted for the next US president but I think okay let, let me at, just get a final uh, uh, response Trump versus okay, hang, Clinton, hang on a sec because we're nearly out of time I'm sorry to interrupt Abby Austin post-truth politics does that uh, give you something to fear or actually is it time for a political reboot politics I think we're seeing a political reboot across the world. We saw it in the Brexit vote. We're about to see it in the American election. But I have faith in America as a force for good. It has always done the right thing. The trouble is, as Winston Churchill says, it exhausts every other option first. Abby Austin, Alexander Nekrasov and Raheem Kassam in Washington, thank you very much for joining us. Now, environmental campaigners have won a high court battle, forcing the government to improve its plans to tackle air pollution. As judges agreed, the current scheme was...